Hey there lovely people of YouTube, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Ajay, I'm a doctor from Bangalore, India. If you're already subscribed, welcome back. I love you to the moon and back. Okay, so currently I'm kind of broke. It's not that I'm out of a job, it's just that I took too many breaks after med school, preparing for various medical licensing exams, and I spent quite a bit of money on stuff for the YouTube channel like this camera, the mic and stuff like that. So on one end of the spectrum, I'm this broke doctor in India. On the other end of the spectrum, there's this doctor in the United States who makes $1.3 million a year. Wow, that's a lot of dough. So there's a video about her on Glamour, the YouTube channel. Let's watch it together. I'll try to break it down and I'll give you some juicy insider info. Let's get started. I'm 41 years old, living in New Jersey. I work as a doctor and I make about $1.3 million a wow. year through practicing medicine and other investments. Okay, at the outset, what we have to notice is that her salary is not 1.3 million. Basically, she makes 1.3 million dollars a year through salary plus other investments. A salary of 1.3 million dollars, even in the US, is bonkers. You can make that much money as a doctor if you're like a partner in the hospital or if you're a rock star doctor like Dr. Q or Dr. Kiprose or Dr. Asher or Dr. Shetty. But normally around 200 to 600 thousand dollars, depending on the specialty, is the average uh, physician compensation in the US. I have about six million dollars in Ooh. savings, one million in 401k, $350,000 in a Roth IRA, and $4.6 in <laughs> other investment stocks and bonds. 401 and uh, Roth IRA are, uh, what I understand, they are like these tax saving, more like a pension scheme or things like that, like you basically save up enough money for retirement or something like that. I'm not very sure, maybe I have to call up my buddy Graham Stephen. If you know what it is, uh, let me know down in the comments or do a millennial thing and slide into my DMs. After taxes, my take home is $75,833 like a month. 80 times as much as I make. dollars a month goes to my mortgage. 600 uh -huh. on That's average decent. on utilities and $300 mm -hmm. on monthly subscriptions. This includes a gym membership and medical subscriptions. Ah, uh, medical subscriptions. I hate those. So basically, uh, when you're a doctor, you have to keep reading these uh, medical journals and medical textbooks to keep your knowledge up to date. And these journals are controlled by large corporate entities like Elsevier, Walters Kluwers, and these companies charge a ridiculous amount of money to access their platforms. For example, up to date is one such subscription, which I kind of use sometimes. And this costs $59 a month for a practicing physician. And suddenly my Netflix subscription feels quite cheap. And the worst part about these companies is that they don't pay that money to the original researchers who wrote the original papers. Basically, the researchers do all the work and these companies take all the money. Dr. Rohin Francis of Medlife Crisis, who is my favorite medical YouTuber, has a video on this and I'll link it down in the description. That leaves around $72,333 a month a to spend. I have no credit card debt and $80,000 in student loans. I still have about $80,000 in student loans and the reason I haven't paid it off is because it's at 1.25% interest and my very intelligent financial planner said why bother? I mean Student debt is big in the US as US medical schools are ridiculously expensive. By the time someone graduates from medical school, they'll have typically anywhere from $200,000 to $250,000 in debt. In India, it's a bit different. In India, there are two ways to get into a medical school. First, you have to take a competitive entrance exam like NEET. We had something called CET back then, but now it's NEET, where the selection percentage is like less than 3%. And after that, once you get selected into medical school, you have to choose between privately managed schools and government schools. Private schools tend to be costlier. Um, they tend to charge you around 4 to 8 lakh rupees a year, which is around uh, 5 to 10 thousand dollars. Government medical schools tend to be more prestigious. The competition to get in is a bit more fierce and the fee is incredibly low. I went to the best government medical school in my state and I spent probably around 1 lakh rupees for the whole of my medical education, which is around $1,400, which is, even for Indian standards, it is crazy. And a few of my friends who topped the state in this entrance exam, NEET and CET, didn't pay anything. They did whole of their medical education for free. So the first way to get into medicine is to go through NEET or CET and get a medical seat and the second way to get into medicine is to buy a medical school seat that's what we call it here and it costs about one to one and a half two crores 
around 200 to 250 thousand dollars so kind of similar as the us make more money investing that than i do having paid it off and not having that money as a lump sum in the she's smart portfolio. she is in order to be where actually i am smart, today like Dr. i went smart. through 12 years of smart. schooling i have yeah. a medically related business and then the money that i have saved up that had yielded investments are the result of my work Okay, this is another thing that people miss when they talk about ridiculous doctor salaries, like when doctors earn like half a million dollars. What they don't note is that they would have spent like 10, 12, 15 years training in school, not making much money when their friends are, you know, like already working, having families and, you know, settling down, investing and things like that. So when you finish college and your friends start working and they start making money, that's when you get into med school in the US. So. Your friends are making money, they're investing, they're starting their families and you are getting into med school, you are not earning anything. In fact, you're incurring debt of $200,000 to $250,000. You do that for four years and then you do a residency for three to five to seven to nine years where you're not getting paid much. You get paid like a basic salary. Only when you become an attending or a consulting physician or a surgeon, that's when you start making real money. Even here in India, a lot of my friends have stable jobs, they're already settled down, they're planning to start a family, but I still have many, many years of training that I still have to complete, but I'm happy where I am. I'm not complaining. What I love most about my job is that there is nothing more personal than being somebody's physician. You can That's walk true. in a room yeah. and talk to them and meet them for the first time, and within a few minutes, they will tell you their deepest, mm -hmm. darkest yeah. secrets. They will take their clothes off to let you examine them mm, and they big. trust you. That's Barely big. any other field yeah. in the world that you can do that with somebody and have that real that's true. connection that's, with someone. It's completely the true. The most expensive yep. thing I ever bought, and this may sound strange coming from somebody who is a vegetarian, was a chinchilla comforter after I had gotten divorced. It was probably about $75,000, <laughs> but it was just something I wanted. Here's my... What the hell is a chinchilla comforter? Let me check. Okay. This is the thing. What is it made of? What's a chinchilla? What's a chinchilla? Ah, oh, it's a rodent. Oh, so it's for $75,000, huh? My last statement. The first transaction is for parking is $15. That was a night we had gone out to go watch a show. I went with my girlfriends. There's nothing better than having some good girlfriends around. And then the United States Post Office, $3.66. I must have been mailing something that needed either certified mail, probably mailing my ex-husband some check for <laughs> child support or something like that. I today pay my ex-husband child support because I make more money than he does. My child support payments are about $2,000 a month and they go towards paying for a babysitter when my daughter is at my ex-husband's home. $2,000. I'm like, if you need a babysitter, why should she be there? Stupid idiot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and the next charge on here is for $210 and that is for my board certification, mm -hmm. um, the renewal for my board certification. If you don't know this, most doctors have to every few years go back and show that they are yeah. still learning and meeting certain standards to keep their medical license and ability to practice. And then yeah, so this is another thing that uh, we doctors, uh, once we graduate medical school and finish residency, it's not the end of the road. We still have to show the board or the medical council that we are updating ourselves, that our medical knowledge is like up to date. So basically we have to attend all these CMEs, these conferences and these workshops and we get something called CME points and we have, we have to accumulate a certain number of points every year or every five years and we have to show it to the state and we have to show it to the state boards or like national boards or like uh, medical councils to prove that we have been, you know, doing our bit to keep ourselves updated. And sometimes you have to even, you know, retake a few of your exams, which kind of sucks. If I could give younger women advice, it would be to go to school and get your education. One of the mm -hmm. best things I ever did was have financial freedom. That's it allows true. me That's to live the life true. that I do, which is filled with happiness, choosing whatever I want and saying no to anyone who disrespects me. I can't say it on camera, but it's the f you factor. <laughs> all right, so that was it. I had to cut down a bit of the video because uh, she spoke a lot of what she spent and all that, and we are not really interested in that. In closing, she's 
well educated she is smart she knows how to invest her money she's probably making 300 to 400000 dollars as a salary and the rest is coming from her investments and uh, interest from her savings and bonds and stocks and things like that so take on points be smart with your finances and invest as much as possible and start as early as possible if you're curious how much a junior doctor like me makes in india that would be the next week's subject so make sure you subscribe and click on that bell icon so you get a notification when i upload that video and all the other videos that are yet to come and if you like this video make sure you give it a huge thumbs up that tells youtube that you like this video and it will show it to more people here's another reaction video i made i think you'll like it so make sure to check it out and i'll see you in the next video